In today's video, we're carrying on our 100 days of modded hardcore by, you guessed it, doing another 100 days. Wow, 200 days, that's a lot. I should put that in the title. A lot of stuff happens in this video and it took a long time to make, so if you feel like subscribing, then, you know, the button's always there. Okay, here we go again. So I used up the rest of day 100 to do something I should have done a while ago, which is make this broadsword here, which is so much better than a regular sword. Look how easy it kills that stupid wandering trader then. I then decided to start out strong by making this taco plate here, using up quite a lot of iron, but look, it makes soft tacos on this pan, on this brick furnace. It looks really cool. And now we have some soft tacos, which actually made a golden taco. See what it did. And it just works like a golden apple. It's nothing special. I then killed a wandering trader because they suck and tried to lasso a villager to find out it doesn't work before making some diamond tools and enchanting them as it's probably about time after I killed the Ender Dranger that I did that. And then on day 102, I stopped faffing around and got working on some projects, starting out by making this massive dirt sort of platform here. We're going to be using this to have a building on. What building, you ask? Well, that's right. It's going to be a villager breeder. Now, I got this design from a YouTuber called Mr. Cat. However, I built it probably a bit wrong at the start and just did it the complete opposite order. But the basic idea is you have these villagers in this hole here. They sleep, they breed, they drop the little baby villagers down into the water there. Then you can pick them up with a minecart and set them on to do whatever you want. So I got the villagers from the village and I think they were actually the last two. So it's a good job we're making this villager breeder here. And it was a bit of a pain to get them in, but we got them in eventually. And look, it should be working now. However, um, yeah, it, it, we kind of had some problems with it, as you'll see a bit later. However, by this point, I hadn't realized that. So I went and gathered some materials because I wanted to make it look pretty. I really like this dacite block here. I think it makes some really cool blocks. So I use that as one of the main blocks. And here you can see me looking at the villagers and getting frustrated with the villagers because they've escaped the hole, which is bad. But we got a baby villager, at least, who did fall down the hole. And I managed to finally get these two back in. I changed the beds around so that the other way and yeah it kind of was working but at the same time completely wasn't so I headed to the nether to gather some more blocks to make this thing look pretty as I was determined to get this thing to work and then I set out building this tower in a similar design to the other builds we've got going I was really happy with this how it turned out and honestly I just love this style of architecture I think it looks really cool I did have a run out of materials at one point though so I had to go get some more uses a lot of cherry wood this build but it's all right we know where the cherry trees are we can get loads whilst I was building this one of my villagers escaped because I broke a block so I had to get him out and then put him back into the top of the tower and honestly I think you all need to give me a pat on the back because there's so many times where I wanted to just kill these villagers and just be done with it but no I, I didn't guys I kept them alive I kept trying kept pushing them together it, it was just the worst I almost quit the video at that point but instead I decided to go to the end because we didn't get to explore the end last time really and with the mob pack we have there are a lot of modded biomes in the end, which we are going to discover soon, including this one here, which is my least favorite of them all because it's got these magma blocks which burn you and they're quite hard to spot and also just kind of annoying. So without being able to fly, quite quite hate this biome here. I did find some cool different stuff in weird chests though. There's all these different structures with all these cool things in. I also found this ruin thing here, which is really weird. It had these pedestals in it and it stole my pickaxe for a bit, but I got it back soon after that. I don't know what this does. I'll have to figure that out a bit later maybe. One of the end shipwrecks had an end city map in it which was really useful so I followed that to find our end city. Burning my feet on the way with that stupid biome there but look found one and I went and got the stuff from it. It didn't take too long because I had the glider from last time still I was able to glide over to the ship. Also the purple blocks look a lot different. It's part of this mod apparently. In one of the chests I found these digging claws which increase my mining speed which are going to be very good and I can put them on my other hand. And after gliding our way down to to the Elytra ship, we actually managed to find some other cool stuff in this chest, including this obsidian skull, which evades fire damage, and this core of flight here, which you can use to make wings, which you'll see very much later. I decided to continue on for a bit because I had my glider and I could go and explore. Found this really cool looking biome here with these weird looking bulbous plants and these bulbous trees. It was very odd. Also, that magma biome is no longer my least favorite. This one is because it's got blooming poison spiders in it and regular spiders that will just attack 
attack you no matter what. However, look at these cool stars over here. I was like, what are these? So I went and mined one and it gave you ice. And yeah, that's pretty uneventful to be honest. I then spotted this weird spawner underground with like an eye of ender in like a single portal block. And it had this shulker box in it, which had some cool stuff in it. So I just took the shulker box because you can. However, at this point, I decided it's probably best if we headed home. I glided all the way back to the portal, which I'd saved. Look at this. This is me being crazy here, but I can glide my way down. It's just a quicker way instead of just following the glider all the way down. And when we made it home, we ended up with our two villagers in this place here somehow. I don't know how that happened, but we slept, put our shulker box down, checked out the goods inside, some pretty good enchantment books in there. And then I decided to rename this tower over here to the Eye of Sauron Reborn, because honestly, that's what it feels like to me. It is the worst. I hate that tower so much, no matter how pretty it looks there. But I decided to continue on with my villager experiment and I built a bridge over here, which I'm going to be using to transport the villagers out. And I wanted this to look nice. I never really me make a minecart bridge for these sort of things. And I thought, let's just go a bit extra on this occasion. And where does this bridge lead? Of course, to where we're going to have our zombie villager converter. So I got building that and made a path so I could lure a zombie across to it to trap him. And then I completed this little design here to convert them. It's going to be a lot easier than I did it in my other worlds before. You may have noticed that one side of the tower was missing a side. So I decided to fix that up quickly and the tower is now complete and as soon as it got to night time we went out and lured a zombie in however it went terribly the first time as he converted into a drowned so I went and got another one this one has armor which means he can have a sword converting our zombies quicker so I let him in there slept went and got a name tag and he disappeared of course he disappeared so whilst screaming internally I went and finished off the converter and also decided to decorate this island here until it was night time again where I found another zombie lured him back and actually got him in this time and called him lucky man because he gets to kill the villagers and I don't and that's right you know what time it is it's time to watch some villagers die so I went and got my potions of weakness and was delighted to find out that the minecart thing worked perfectly luring him over to our villager over here however he took a while to convert which was sad but he eventually did and we got him converting into a good guy however he needs somewhere to go so we're going to build him somewhere to go I killed some chickens to take out some rage along with collecting loads of resources and also my previous silk touch shovel had broken so I made a new one and you can probably tell that I was getting a bit delusional at this point as I named my shovel grass me daddy I, I feel terrible already do you know what doesn't make me feel terrible building so I went ahead and built this little hut here this is where we're going to be having all our sort of librarian villagers for now my plan is to have like a village on the water and have all the different huts with all the different villagers in and this is going to be like one of many in the future and whilst transferring our first villager over there he fell in the water but we managed to finally get him in as he just followed the place to the lectern and we got him in the spot we wanted to and then I continued Continued this process, breeding some more villagers, which was finally working, and we also converted some more as well. And I wanted this guy to give me a mending book, and oh my gosh, I've never been so long without getting a mending book. I actually set him on fire at one point by hitting him, but managed to put him out luckily. I also came across some weird enchantments on the way, which I'm excited to try out. After not getting a mending book, I killed this guy here because I was frustrated. And then finally, after about 15 minutes of trying, we got a mending book. I was so excited, as you can see here. I broke the lectern about 300 times, I reckon, in total. So I went and got some wood as I needed to get some more emeralds with sticks. And I came back and, yeah, his uh, trade had changed to Frostwalker. And my gosh, I nearly killed this guy. But I kept persisting and I eventually got a mending book, which actually cost cheaper. So that was all right in the end. And now that I have a mending book I finally decided to do some enchantments and also make some really good tools so I used up a lot of my enchantment points here but most of our stuff had mending on now which was good I then brought in another villager and got this really good silk touch trade but when day 30 came around I got a bit bored of villagers so I went looking for some neverite instead I probably should have some after 130 days of playing and we managed to get a decent amount of ancient debris I think I aimed for about eight blocks in total as I wanted to have two neverite ingots. And we managed to get pretty lucky and got quite a lot in only a few days. When I headed home, obviously I smelted it all and it started raining, which is the first time it's rained and I hate the rain. So I went out and just did some, you know, like resource gathering and stuff, including getting some of this white sand here. As that's right, we're going to be building something else. And what we're going to be building is a smithing area. I wanted to my smithing to be epic. So I built this massive sword in this rock here so I could put 
put my smithing table underneath it. So when I made my Neverite stuff, I felt awesome. And look at that. A Neverite pickaxe and a Neverite broadsword. This thing does 17 attack damage. Pretty ridiculous. But I wanted to make my pickaxe better, so I headed to this biome here called Forest Fault, which I discovered earlier, and went digging underground, as that's right, it's got this weird ore in it. It's called Penderite, and what it is, right, is you can put it in a smithing table after you've smelted it in a furnace, of course, and you can upgrade a Neverite tool even further, which makes this pickaxe pretty awesome. And with my new tool, I was feeling pretty confident, so I made this shield here and headed to one of those towers which we kept trying last time. And this time, I was determined to do well. I cleared floor after floor. Witches were annoying. Creepers exploded. Spiders tried to kill me. It, it was the worst. The zombie floors were kind of easy, though, thanks to this new shield. This one, this one sucked. I hated that one. But not as much as this one here, which uh, had a lot of witches, which they kept hurting each other. But after quite a while of battling random mobs, eating golden apples, Apples, getting like name tags from the chests, etc. We've made it to the top where there's this thing here, which I used some boss keys on. It uses up like six or something. And as you can see, this tower guardian spawned. I was panicking. I had no idea this was going to happen. I thought it would just be a chest. But after a lot of hits on him, literally, it took quite a while to kill him. We managed to get some stuff. He dropped this weird key pickaxe thing, I think it was, and all these like emeralds, etc. It was pretty cool. And when I was gliding home, I remembered that I got that core of flight earlier and I had a lot of this rotten demonic flesh stuff. So I made these wings, which are like elytra. However, they attach to your back and they don't break. So they're pretty good. And look, they look a lot cooler than elytra as well. I then changed my villager tower as it wasn't working and made it just as like a basic one that I normally do instead. And we got trading some good books. We added mending to all of our armor. You may have to pause to catch all the names that I named them all there, but there's some pretty weird ones. And the reason I was adding mending was because my arm was getting pretty low. So I went down to my skeleton spawner and I basically just killed skeletons until all my armor was fixed up. I love mending so much. It's the best. And then continue to convert villagers, seeing as I had so much gold now and just golden apples galore from that tower. And finally made some fireworks so I could fly around a bit more. Look how pretty my area is looking. I was just looking at it like, oh, isn't it nice? And do you know what else is nice? Flying, baby. That's right. We headed out. We grabbed some bookshelves here as we needed to make some more lecterns for these villagers we need to convert. I also found this golden squid, so I killed it to see if it dropped anything, but it just dropped ink sack. It wasn't anything special. I then got this book called Acquisition which you can add to like your axe, your pickaxe, your shovel, and it works like a magnet. It basically just puts whatever you mine into your inventory, which is going to be very useful. So I added it to all of my tools. And at this point, I was on a roll. I just wanted to keep converting villagers, so I did. I made this excavator here as I wanted to make a slime farm, as I needed some slime for some stuff. So I found this slime chunk here and started hollowing it out. However, I realized that I didn't actually need to hollow out the top part. So after all this digging here, which took me like 30 minutes I, I i just dug down and started doing it underground instead because that's probably what i should have done in the first place however you'll notice here i, I kind of left the slime chunk i dug out all this space and, and i did it in the wrong chunk i'm an idiot and then when i actually tried to get the proper chunk working it was just full of lava there was just lava everywhere so i just did it on top of the lava almost died in the lava i'm complaining about to that zombie there so i instead decided to dig up and just clear out some room to get this slime farm working. And you can clearly see it says slime trunk in the top left. However, I had no luck. I stood here for quite a while, no slime spawned. I don't know what to do. It wasn't working, so I gave up. So I looked on the recipe book and figured out that in the end, there's a way to get slime. So I headed out and found some more weird biomes. Some of them look really pretty. Found these weird pedestals here. Found this really strange looking one here, but this one is beautiful. Look at all the cool flowers and more importantly, this weird slime thing. I don't know what it is, but it drops slime balls. So I killed a load of them. Also gathered some flowers, gathered more slime. I needed quite a lot. Found these really cute fish as well. So I decided to put one in a bucket. There's also some jellyfish there, which sting. And then headed home. And of course, I forgot to set my blooming spawn. So I ended up here, which takes me like 10 minutes to get home every time. Tried planting these weird flowers I found, but I couldn't. So instead got working on the project I needed the slime for. I cleared out a massive space here. This took quite a long time to clear out, but it's going to be worth it. Trust me. And after completing this mysterious hole, I went and gathered a load of redstone, iron, etc. I needed resources because that's right. We're going to be building 
a sugarcane farm. And normally when I build a sugarcane farm, I do the one with like an observer and I just sort of like do it very small. But this one is a big scale sugarcane farm. This one has the rails with the collecting system, etc. And we're going to get a lot of passive sugarcane off this thing. I was just testing out the rails here, as you can see, to make sure it would collect it and deposit it in the chest here, which it does. Everything's working perfectly. I'm feeling a lot better. So I decided to cover this area in leaves as otherwise this sort of machine we're going to have will push them away. I then got working on the layout and I made it so that every single block basically was a bit of sugarcane apart from the ones that needed to be water. A very, very nice sugarcane farm. I'm very proud of this thing. And the way it works is you make this sort of automatic moving machine thing. I can't remember what the actual word is for it. And it basically just goes back and forth, destroys all the sugarcane. The minecart collects it from underneath. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. I, I'm just so happy with it. <laughs> it's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it is practical. And look how happy I was. Look at the sugar cane we're getting. Oh, it's beautiful. Sorry, I need to stop saying that. Now, after spending a lot of days on that, I decided to go out looking for some buried treasure. As there's often some cool stuff in these chests, as you're about to see. I found this underwater mine shaft, which was kind of cool, but I didn't get to explore it because I kept running out of air, which was annoying. Also found this structure with this book in it, which was really kind of creepy. Like, I, I don't know what this is, but I kind of got a bit scared, so I just threw it and then ran away. In this buried treasure here, I got this plastic drinking hat, which apparently makes potions drinking quicker, which is kind of interesting, but I don't really drink potions that often. I also found this new biome on my adventures with these really cool flowers in it, so I took a load of them home. I also found these kitty slippers which means creepers are scared of you. Very cool, however, I prefer my flippers. Next to one of the Bowie treasures was this really cute dog, so I decided to tame him, and I called him Joel Jr. because he looked exactly like a Joel Jr. because I'm adorable, I don't know what I'm saying. I then headed to the end as I needed some ender pearls because there's something I noticed that I thought would be quite cool. I got loads, came back, and ended up at the blooming spawn again, so decided to make a waystone this time to leave here in case I messed up again. I then made another waystone, and headed to the nether as we needed to go back to the nether fortress and it was a lot easier this time with rockets. I did however end up in this little crack here at some point, not sure how that happened but we finally managed to make it back to our nether fortress and we got killing some blazes for some blaze rods and then headed home, grabbed an enchanting table from this tower here and made this chunk loader and what this does is it leaves a 5x5 five five area loaded. So what I did is I put it under my sugarcane farm in hopes that sugarcane will keep growing and and I keep getting some even when I'm not nearby. I then brought another librarian across and this guy gave an end veil enchantment so I decided to test that out and what it does is it means you can look at endermen and they won't get angry at you. Pretty cool. But what wasn't cool was this island so I decided to fix it to make it look a bit nicer underground so now everything is looking all neat and tidy there. I then did some more villager converting and I have a solid supply of emeralds now thanks to trading this paper. Our new villager gave an efficiency 5 trade so obviously I had to snack that up and put that on my pickaxe which is now wonderful. I then fixed my shovel here because it was getting quite low and my mending villager after upgrading him gave me another mending book but for cheaper so that was pretty awesome. But you know how I upgraded my netherite pickaxe? Turns out there's a way you can do that for armor as well and it involves this biome here called like a guiana shield and in this biome are these ores here. However these ores turns out my pickaxe doesn't like them. I couldn't mine them. You need a netherite or higher and mine is higher but it wouldn't mine them so I had to go and actually make a netherite never right pickaxe which of course require getting some ancient debris and making a whole new pickaxe which is kind of a pain but it could come in useful later. I then headed back and got these ammonite gems here and these gems can be added to your armor to upgrade them. So I upgraded my protect my bobs chest plate and although it adds a lot of extra armor it kind of just looks like an iron chest plate so I was kind of disappointed by that. I then decided to fill in my failed slime farm and just pretend that that never happened. And after gathering some materials, I decided I wanted to build a building here. I then laid out the foundations here. I wanted this building to be quite high up so I could use like the basement section as well. I made some cool different things, gathered some materials, including this soul sand here to make these soul sand bricks. I love how many different cool blocks there are in this mob pack and we're going to be using them 
to make a factory. That's right, we're gonna be doing some industrial stuff in here and I wanted a cool building to do it in and I think this building is pretty cool and it also fits in with the rest of our aesthetic. Also look, you can right click twice to make these other cool paths. Whilst I was doing all my other stuff, I was also breeding these villagers up and putting them in the hall and this is actually the final one of this building. We've got six in here, which is perfect and this final guy gave us a trade of smashing. So I bought it because I was like, what is it? and I couldn't figure it out. I tried it on every single tool I could imagine and I just couldn't figure out what it did. So I forgot it for now and got working on our industrial section which involved making a load of complicated machines and doing some like complicated smashing stuff and getting sap from trees and making wires and all this other confusing stuff and honestly, I think I just got in a bit over my depth. I wanted to make another chunk load as this mod made one which wasn't just five by five blocks and you could actually choose how big it was. Oh, I also upgraded my furnace here to an obsidian furnace which works super, super quickly for smelting out iron. And the next few days, I just tried my hardest to make this mod work, but I realized I was just in over my depth. The thing I wanted to make this chunk loader was like end game stuff and I had to make a ton of machines before I could even get close to that chunk loader. So I I decided to just make a few things anyway and just test them out and we managed to get this generator working which is kind of cool but I just gave up and just relaxed with Peter the Panda for a bit. I also put down this dragonfly which I got from the end and called him Darren and I also got this dolphin here because I felt like I needed more friends and I named this dolphin Daisy as it just looked like a daisy. It's very cute, it swims around our area now. And I don't know what happened around this time but I just became pet obsessed. I went and found this squid here which was really cute and you can put it in a bucket and gave it the name of Sally because Sally the squid sounds adorable and place them next to Daisy. On day 181, I did nothing. I don't know what I did. I couldn't remember. But on day 182 onwards, I decided to start clearing out this area here and terraforming it a little bit as well because we're going to be adding some fun stuff on it. As to be honest, I was kind of sick of eating tacos constantly. So I wanted another food source and I found a really, really good one. I needed to get some tomato seeds, which I did. I then bone milled it and planted a load of tomatoes here as well as a load of wheat as well as we're going to be using that. But we need somewhere to make this new food source. So where we're going to make it? This little cottage here. I'm calling this Granny's Cottage because it is adorable. And we all know grannies make the best food. They just want to make you feel well fed. And trust me, this food we're going to be making, it makes you well fed. But there's a few things we need other than wheat and tomatoes. And one of those things is salt. So I went looking for salt and this stuff is quite rare. It spawns in riverbeds and luckily there is a lot of it here. So we can save this location, come back later and get more if we need. I then got decorating the interior of Granny's cottage using these cool tile blocks here, which I didn't know we had, as we wanted to make a nice little kitchen area to cook our mysterious food, which I haven't told you about yet, which you will find out very shortly, to be honest. And look, this little kitchen, it's so cute. And we've actually got space on the right hand side there for some farmer villagers, which I'm going to add in a bit later. But the time has come to make our epic food. We got a load of milk, which we converted into cheese. And we also made some dough. Tomatoes, cheese, dough. Have you got it yet? That's right. It's a pizza. We're making this cheese pizza. And look, it heals up seven hunger. I killed this wandering trader to celebrate and I was just really happy with how my air is turning out. We've made so much progress and I spent the rest of the day just doing some chores, you know, making some more pizzas before heading back to the end once again. There's just so much good stuff in this biome and look, I can look at endermen now and they won't attack me. I love it. I then crafted this end stone furnace here, which is going to be able to make some cool armor for us. You'll see in a second, there's a few things we need to gather, including making this iron smith hammer, which I was like, oh, smashing. No, no, it doesn't work. But what it does do is turn these end crystals here into ender dust. And we're going to be needing a lot of this stuff. So I headed back to the end and got loads of cool stuff. Found some more new unique biomes, which I'd never seen before. Got some more of the end crystals, which you just mine. Also found an abandoned mine shaft in the end. Very weird. Almost as weird as that biome there. But after gathering a load of cool stuff in the end, I decided to head home and convert all this stuff into ender dust, which you can then convert into termite ingots. I put down our new dragonfly and named it Dinky as it looked like a dinky before heading back to the end to gather more ancient debris as we're going to be needing neverite ingots of course. What doesn't use neverite ingots these days, eh? Eh? After gathering enough for an ingot, I made a termite helmet which I thought would look kind of cool and it kind of does but not really that cool. Instead, we converted the neverite ingot with a termite ingot into this aerodium ingot which I can't pronounce to make this pretty cool looking helm. I thought it would have spikes but it didn't. I was kind of disappointed about the lack of spikes. 
Also, I'm seriously outgrowing this chest system here. Everything is getting so crowded. We've got shulker boxes building up. It's horrible. But like most of my problems in life, I decided to ignore that and instead build a barn, which is what you do when you avoid your problems. And I built this barn next to Granny's cottage as I wanted to put some cows in there as we want everything to make pizzas in this area. We need a lot of milk. I also added a storage system and decorated in there, as well as put a cow in there to milk. And for my last day, I wanted to do something kind of special. So I made all these paper blocks here and then got working on some cute paper lanterns. And yes, I did steal this idea from my wife, Lizzie, but I thought it would work perfectly with my Asian inspired area as it just looks so cute all together. I then planted some blackberries as well because I thought I needed another crop there. And we watched the sunset as that's right, we've reached day 200. My gosh, this was a while. We look ridiculous, but I'm loving our area. I think our area is looking awesome. It's practical. It looks cool. And there's still so much more to do. So if you want to see more of this, make sure to let me know in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. And that is it for 200 days of Hardcore Modded.